Hello, Oscillator Sync here. This is the Zoom Multistomp MS70 CDR Chorus Delay and Reverb. It is a multi effects pedal that gives you access to lots of different modulation, delay, and reverb sounds in one package. It is relatively inexpensive, and for the money, it sounds pretty good. So, for that reason, it's very, very popular. Given that it provides access to so many different effects types, it does lead you to wonder perhaps, is it a jack of all trades and master of none? So uh, a number of months ago, I did a shootout video where I compared it to this, the Digitect Polaro, which is a dedicated reverb pedal. I will put a link in the description of this video if you want to take a look at that video. But the sort of general conclusion that I came to at the end was that if you want sort of good basic reverb sounds that always sound good, almost impossible to make it sound bad, the, the Polara kind of beats the zoom, but the flexibility of the zoom and the access to the more weird effects uh, certainly does make a compelling argument for the zoom if that is more interesting to you. But that of course was just looking at reverb sounds. So today I would like to compare the zoom to a delay pedal in that sort of price range which uh, in this case is going to be the TC Electronic Flashback 2. So this video is probably going to be fairly long, so I'll put timings in the video's description, but I just want to start out by doing kind of a feature comparison of these two pedals. So let's just briefly talk about the build quality. Um, the zoom is metal, it feels solid. The TC Electronic is also metal and feels solid. Obviously the zoom does have this screen here, which if it's on the floor, may be liable to be stepped on or have things dropped on it. Also these knobs here, uh, encoders I should say, are sort of plastic and they're clicky. So also the angle that they're at also makes me feel a little bit worried. You know, they don't feel like they're gonna fall off or anything, but if this was on the floor, if you were indeed stomping on it, I would maybe be a little bit uh, worried about it. So the controls on the flashback are fairly straightforward. You have a mode knob for selecting the different uh, delay types. So you have a digital analog tape, uh, dynamic, uh, and a number of other ones. We'll take a look at those in detail uh, as we go on. We have a delay time knob, we have a feedback knob, and we have a level knob for the, uh, the delay signal. Uh, we have this selector here, which will modify um, the range of the delay and also of the tap tempo because it does indeed have tap tempo if you press and hold the, um, the foot switch it will go into tap tempo mode sort of momentarily you can tap in a tempo and away you go so these will change the timing divisions and importantly the last one uh, will offset the left and right signal if you're working in stereo so you get um, different timings on each side to give you stereo width. That also applies when you're turning the delay knob as well. The foot switch on the flashback also serves another purpose and it's related to this mash, I don't know whether you can see this here, mash feature here. And basically depending on what mode you're on or what um, tone print which we'll get to, you're on, uh, you can press and then press down further on the uh, foot switch and that will do something to the preset often. For example, it will ramp up the feedback to get you into self-oscillation. We should also talk about these uh, last three uh, settings on the mode knob. These are your tone print settings. Uh, and the tone print, if you're not familiar with it, is the TS Electronic um, way of getting new modes, new uh, uh, delay sounds in this case, or reverb sounds if it was their reverb pedal, etc., into the pedal. Uh, the way that you can do this, well, there's two different ways of doing it. There's a phone app, and the idea is that you hold your phone to your guitar pickup if you're playing it with a guitar, and it uploads it that way. Or there's a desktop app as well, which is what I um, tend to use, USB connection on the back. It's worth knowing that there is a tone print editor available for the desktop, uh, which allows you to go really, really in-depth into pretty much everything about the delay sound. I'm not gonna to touch on that too much uh, in this video, although I will demo a tone print that I've made that I like, but you really can tailor so much. Um, you know, the filtering of the delay, the saturation of the delay, the offset between the, uh, the left and right sides, the way that things are filtered, um, 
even the way that the knobs react and what they actually do, uh, you know, this doesn't have to be a delay knob. Actually, you can reassign the functions to all sorts of internal parameters. You can also do things like modulation and pitching up. It, you can really, really craft something that is sort of uniquely yours with the tone print. And it's, it's pretty straightforward to use. Um, and it's definitely something that's worth digging into if you get uh, any of the tone print pedals, actually. If you're interested, um, let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to do a video where I walk through making a, a new delay sound from scratch using tone print, because uh, I think that would be uh, pretty good fun. I guess the final thing to talk about here actually uh, is the final sort of real mode here, which is this will also act as a loop pedal. I think it's up to 40 seconds if it's working in mono, which is pretty um, generous. Uh, it's a fairly basic looper. You've got no reverse or pitch up or anything like that. It's just sort of sound on sound looping, but it's certainly a nice thing to have in a pinch. I didn't have a, a loop pedal sort of hanging around in my home studio. So it's, it's a nice little addition if that's something I actually want. So the zoom at first looks like it has fewer controls, but actually that's not the case at all. So you have these three knobs here, but these three knobs also act as buttons uh, for doing various things. You also have this sort of um, D-pad arrangement around um, the, the center foot switch for navigating various men menus because there are indeed menus, presets, and so on. So um, we can go up and down to select different models um, so say we wanted the lo-fi delay, uh, as we turn the knobs, we will go into the detail view of what we're seeing here. So now we have the controls for each of these, um, but we can also page through. So there are multiple pages on some of these. Um, and I think this is probably the most important thing to note about the zoom is that when we talk about this being a multi effects, it is a multi effects in the true sense in that you can run multiple effects at once. So at the moment we have one pedal in our chain, but I can add in another pedal. So perhaps say I wanted a, a reverb to be after that one. So now I have two pedals, a reverb and a delay, which I can turn on and off independently. Uh, you can store presets, you can move the pedals around. There's some limited routing that you can do in there as well. Um, you can load multiple different uh, models. So I think I've got up to like seven different pe pedals in there. So it really is, um, very generous in what you get in such a small uh, space and for a relatively small amount of money. Unlike the flashback, there's no sort of deep editing that you can do. However, it is worth noting that in the last month or so, a um, hack has been released essentially, which allows you to load all of the other effects from the multi-stomp series. So primarily um, that gives you access to things like distortions into any of the multi-stomp pedals. So um, although this uh, this one hasn't been um, hacked, but this has just got chorus delays and reverbs plus some other um, modulation effects, it is possible now, you can find the links uh, online, um, to upgrade this pedal even further to have a bunch of other effects on top of the stuff that it came with, which was already really very generous. So that's another sort of tick in the box for the zoom in terms of flexibility. So we'll be getting into the sound demos really soon, uh, but first I just wanna go through a couple of sort of frequently asked questions uh, just to cover those off before we get there. So first of all, power. Uh, both of the pedals can be powered off a standard uh, effects pedals, nine volt power supply. Uh, in terms of batteries, if you wanna take them out and about, the zoom will run off two AA batteries, weirdly, rather than the normal nine volt batteries. They don't last terribly long but you can do it uh, the flashback will also run off a nine volt battery i haven't tried using a nine volt battery but given that this is a sort of very digital um, pedal i can't imagine it lasts that long from experience but that's just a guess but again both these pedals run off batteries as well so you can take them out and about if you want to do that so now let's talk about signal levels. So these are both guitar effects pedals sort of originally. Um, so when we're plugging in our synths, we're gonna be giving them uh, a line level output, which is much, much higher than what you would get from a guitar. So do they handle line level output? Uh, the zoom, yes, it does. Um, generally, it's pretty hard unless you're hitting it with a really hot signal to make it clip on one effect, but as you start to put multiple effects together, you do often get inter, inter 
pedal or into into um, effects so between say the uh, delay and reverb here you may get clipping in between those effects which is really really harsh ugly digital clipping no real redeeming feature um, so you do need to be a little bit careful with that a lot of the pedals will have a separate um, level control actually this one the lo-fi delay doesn't but a lot of them do and you can use that to kind of um, stop yourself from getting that ugly digital clipping the flashback also works absolutely fine with line level um, signals uh, if you hit it really hot the delays tend to grunge up a bit the dry signal doesn't for reasons i'll get to um, but the delays do grunge up but most of them grunge up in quite a pleasant way um, i found that driving the tape delay uh, algorithm hard gives you quite a nice gritty sound for example um, so you can use that creatively um, but do be aware that you will get that grittiness and grunginess if you hit them too hot so um, in a lot of the demos you'll see later i'll be running the volume on the synths lower than i normally would probably just to uh, give you a more representative um, sound demo so next do they work in stereo and when you ask that question you're probably asking one of two different things and i'll try and answer both of those the first is if you give it a stereo signal um, both left and right does it honor that stereoness on the delay as it comes out uh, in the case of uh, the flashback yes it does um, stereo stuff going in will always be stereo coming back out in the case of the zoom it depends which model you are using some of them work in stereo some of them will sum to mono the other thing you may be asking when you're talking about stereo is whether or not you can get sort of a ping pong delay by giving it a mono signal and then get that width by getting sort of ping pong sounds on the flashback the answer is yes in all cases and if you have the switch uh, set to the bottom um, even tweaking your delay knob will always give you stereo width because it'll be giving you different um, subdivisions on left and right the zoom again it depends a lot of the delay models have some kind of either independent stereo uh, per side uh, timings or they have a dedicated ping pong mode uh, but not all of them some of them will again only work either in mono or just pass through the stereo left and right in the demos um, i'm going to always run the flashback in stereo because i think probably taking a mono synth signal and making it stereo with ping pong is a common thing that you want to do if i can do it on a preset on the zoom i will but if i can't i will leave it in mono um, agonized over whether that's a fair comparison but that's what i settled on okay uh, next question is there a uh, analog dry through uh, on the flashback yes there is so that means that there is no delay caused by analog to digital conversion on the dry sound so if you put this in uh, an aux send or an effects loop you won't get any comb filtering the zoom everything is digitized including your dry signal so if you put this in um, in parallel with something so again in an aux send um, you will potentially get comb filtering artifacts happening uh, with your dry sound so that's something to be aware of absolutely fine though if you're using it as an insert in line okay next can it go 100 percent wet so this is going to be important again if you are putting this in an aux send if it goes 100 percent wet then you don't need to worry about the dry sound being sort of redoubled through the send uh, on the flashback uh, yes uh, you can kill the dry signal altogether but you do that by way of a dip switch uh, inside the pedal um, and that takes the the dry signal out altogether so all you get coming out of the pedal is the delay sound the level control uh, is not a mix control it is the the level of the delay sound the volume of the delay sound on the zoom it depends on the model again this is the standard answer i think here some of the mixes are wet dry so turn that knob all the way to the right to get rid of the dry signal uh, but some of them are a um, delay level instead in which case you can't get rid of the dry sound finally before we get into the sound demos can it go long and weird and ambient uh, zoom yes absolutely the maximum delay time on a lot of the models is really really long uh, four seconds 
but you can make it go longer by giving it tap tempo and setting the timing division uh, much higher. Uh, can it go very weird? A lot of the models are very, very weird indeed. Um, so yes, absolutely long and weird, the Zoom can do. That is a common thread with the Zoom pedal, which is why people like using it for sort of ambient jams with their synths. Uh, on the flashback, can it go long and weird? Well, it can certainly go long. Um, on a lot of the models, I think the maximum delay time is like seven seconds, which is pretty huge. Um, can it go weird? Yes, absolutely. The basic delay sounds aren't super weird, but you can certainly push them into sort of uh, sort of rolling feedback in a lot of cases. But once you get into the tone prints, yeah, I mean, there's just loads of stuff that you can play with there uh, that is long, weird, ambient, and lovely. So that's plenty of talking. Let's get into the sound demos. I'm not going to go through every single model. Um, I'm going to do like for like where I can. Uh, so uh, digital analog tape um, modulated octave up. I will do a like for like comparison. Uh, I will then, uh, after the comparisons, um, show off some of the weirder uh, delay sounds on the zoom and also a tone print that I made on the flashback. In all of the demos, I will start with something that's tempo synced, explore some of the parameters. I will then tend to go short to hear sort of slap backy type sounds and then very, very long crank the, the feedback, etc., to see where we can push the sounds as well. As I said before, uh, the flashback is always gonna be in stereo. The zoom will be in stereo in any of the modes when it can. I'll reserve my judgment uh, until the end so I don't cloud your judgment. But uh, after the demos, join me at the end of the video and I'll tell you what I thought. Without further ado, here's a bunch of sounds.
So, what did I think? So, tonally, if we're talking sort of pure sonics, on the things that we did sort of the A-B tests on, I have to say that generally I preferred the sound of the flashback. It wasn't always totally clear cut, I don't think. But it did tend to have uh, a depth to it that the Zoom sometimes lacked. That's not to say the Zoom sounded bad. Just next to the flashback, I could hear that there was a difference. I think a good um, place to, to to hear that is just on the pure digital delay. You know, digital delay should be sort of clean and, cl- and clean and just a perfect replication. But there was something about the flashback that sounded a bit more deep and interesting a bit more 3d i guess um so yeah I mean, tonally this worked f- better for me certainly the zoom had all of those other modes uh, baked in i love the lo-fi delay that i showed off for example um and the filter ping pong is is super cool especially when you put it on drums and get something rhythmic happening you know they're they're all really really useful and, and those are modes that you would maybe struggle to replicate directly with the, the flashback even with the tone prints um that said i like my sort of dirty tape tone print on here as well one thing i noticed that was really different between the two of them in most modes was how it dealt with having the delay time changed in real time in most cases apart from the tape i think when you changed the uh, delay time on the zoom, it would basically go silent while it readjusted the the delay buffer, meaning that if you tried to make delay time tweaks in real time, you basically have a, a gap in your delay sound. You can maybe cover that up by having like a delay, uh, another delay further on down that you could switch into while you're, while you're adjusting times or, or a reverb or something, but it makes it really difficult to do those kind of weird delay time sweeps that the flashback did really, really well. And what was really interesting about the flashback is that on like the analog and tape modes, uh, changing that delay time gave you that sort of stretchy, squashy um, tape and analog sort of uh, interpolated uh, delay time. So you had that smooth transition, you could do all those sort of uh, pitch bends. But what I hadn't really considered or, or or seen really for myself until i did this video actually so this was really really fun for me is that on the digital ones when you change the delay time especially if you go from long delay times and back it seems to smash the buffer so you don't get um gaps but you can hear the digital glitches get introduced and actually with the feedback turned up high that's a fantastic sound happening in stereo getting this kind of digital glitchy texture and then with the delay down low on the digital modes so on the on the actual digital one and on like the uh modulated and uh uh crystal modes uh moving the delay time with the delay really low gave you almost like granular textures i've barely played with the digital ones out of some sort of weird snobbery or something i don't really know but i'm going to go back to them because i could see myself creating entire loops based around those glitchy textures to sit as a bed under other sounds um so i'm really glad that i did this video just for for discovering that um again don't let it sound like i am coming down hard on the zoom i don't think the zoom sounds bad and the flexibility that it gives you in terms of being able to layer up multiple different virtual pedals all in a row is just such an incredible sound design tool that if you know one single delay is not quite as 3d or rich as 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 the stuff on the tc electronics you know that is a huge huge deal and you know you you can't do that with the flashback so if you're really looking for something that's sort of sonically adventurous then the zoom still is a great uh great buy that said the flashback does have the tone print editor so you can get in really in depth with your sound design but only on one delay sound anyway i hope that was useful and interesting and you enjoyed it if you did please if you could take the time to just tap that thumbs up button um it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside uh, and make sure you're uh, subscribed to the channel if you're not already um we do lots of things with uh, synths here and 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 effects and uh, then i'm sure there'll be more stuff that you'll find interesting uh, coming up soon other than that As always, thank you so much for joining me. 
Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.